On August 16th, President Joe Biden signed into law the Inflation Reduction Act bill. It's a bill largely centered around climate change and is the government's largest initiative, their biggest push into spurring on innovation and driving down cost around clean energy. The automotive industry stands to benefit largely from this as there are huge incentives for automakers to produce electric vehicles in North America. In this video, I wanna focus specifically on Tesla though, because I think that they stand to benefit in the tune of billions of dollars of incentives from the US government. And I wanna give a special hat tip to Brad Ferguson. I was listening to a Twitter Spaces and he was talking about this bill and it really got me down the rabbit hole of digging into this, learning a little bit more, talking to some people so that I could bring you a really nice summary of what this means for Tesla. First and foremost, there is a clean vehicle credit. The consumer will receive a $3,750 tax credit for new vehicles, but there are a few caveats to that. The income is capped at $150,000 for individuals, 300K for household. There's a purchase cap of $80,000 MSRP for vans, SUVs, and trucks, and a $55,000 cap for all other vehicles. Unlike previous legislation around EV tax credits, there now is no cap on the number of vehicles per automaker, and this takes place at the point of sale. Additionally, there are some criteria that automakers have to meet in order to qualify for this tax credit. First of all, the final assembly needs to be in North America. The critical minerals for these batteries either need to be extracted, processed, or recycled in the United States or free trade partners. Now the government doesn't just tell automakers to go and figure out the raw materials piece of things. They also put some incentives on them to locally source their raw materials. I think one of the biggest incentives is around cells and modules. If the automaker meets the aforementioned criteria, they then will get a $35 per kilowatt hour discount on cells. There's an additional $10 per kilowatt hour incentives for modules. Now I understand that as battery packs. So there's an incentive for companies who make cells and as well who put those cells into battery packs. So potentially automakers who are making both cells and packs will be able to combine that for a total discount of $45 per kilowatt hour. So if this is a 100 kilowatt hour pack, companies like Tesla stand to save $4,500 off of the total cost of that pack. And what I love about this bill is that it doesn't stop there. It goes further downstream. And in my personal opinion, this is really where the bottleneck is, the raw materials. There's not only a savings on the cell and module production, but there's also a savings on the actual production of the minerals of 10%. And in case you're curious, the bill does explicitly mention what materials are considered critical materials. And they do include the usual suspects, lithium, nickel, cobalt, and a whole host of other materials. What I think the US government is trying to do is to encourage businesses to become less dependent on raw materials sourced from areas of conflict and encourage them to produce them here. Furthermore, what's incredibly crafty is that they do wrap in recycled materials. So even though the raw materials perhaps initially came from areas of conflict, if they're recycled and processed, that then counts for this tax credit. So it does spur on the recycling piece of things too. And this bill doesn't just stop at automotive, it continues into other products that Tesla sells like solar. There are tax incentives for manufacturing the solar, including the thin film photovoltaic cells and crystalline photovoltaic cells, the wafers, the solar grade polysilicon, and the polymetric back sheet. And as a consumer, just in case you're curious, there are also incentives for installing solar on your property, both commercial and residential. This bill also has provisions for power providers purchasing property for clean energy generation, as well as the installation 
of solar and battery storage. Battery storage also gets its subtle nod. In previous legislation, you had to couple energy storage with solar. Now there is a standalone provision for energy storage too. There is a 6% credit for both existing qualified facilities and energy storage technology and an additional 2 and 10% respectively for new investments in qualified facilities and energy storage tech. Qualified commercial clean vehicles also get their opportunity to save some money. This is a 15% savings on commercial vehicles with a cap of 7,500 for vehicles that are less than 14,000 pounds and a 15% savings with a cap of $40,000 for vehicles that are north of that 14,000 pounds. So what this means for people purchasing Tesla semi-trucks is that they're going to be able to take advantage of that $40,000 savings. Now these next two provisions aren't specifically products that Tesla creates, but gosh, it got me thinking that this may pave the way for Tesla to produce a microgrid. The thermal energy storage property provision allows for a 6% credit for installation of thermal energy storage for residential or commercial with a capacity of no less than five kilowatt hours. This provision goes on to script out exactly what that means and what it's for. It says it is directly connecting to a heating, ventilation, or air conditioning system, removes heat from or adds to a storage medium for subsequent use, and provides energy for the heating or cooling of the interior of a residential or commercial building. And more explicitly, it talks about a microgrid and a 6% credit for installation. And, and a qualified microgrid is defined as an electrical system which includes equipment which is capable of generating not less than four kilowatts and not greater than 20 megawatts of electricity, is capable of operating in connection with an electrical grid, and as a single controllable entity with respect to such grid and independently and disconnected from such grid and is not part of the bulk power system. I'm not sure about you, but this sounds a lot like a product that Tesla could create to allow homeowners to be independent microgrids. Why is this bill important? Well, I think that number one, it spurs on job creation and innovation in clean tech. Number two, it helps drive down the cost of new technology, which is traditionally more expensive. You've heard people say that electric vehicles are for rich people. The same thing could probably be said about any new technology or any early adopter. They're typically paying a little bit more, but as more things are produced, they hit economies of scale drive down the cost, and makes it more affordable for the masses. Though this bill was not written specifically for Tesla, it does address every single product that they sell and future products I think that they will likely get into with microgrids. If you're an investor of any automaker, I think that you should be extremely excited about this, not only from a consumer tax credit purchasing side of an electric vehicle, but this also gets at the heart of why electric vehicles are more expensive, which is the raw materials, the battery packs, one of the largest expenses or costs in an electric vehicle. This spurs on innovation, development, and companies to make investments in mines and materials that are in North America, as well as the recycling piece. This bill is a massive advancement in bringing jobs to America and North America and spurring on America's energy independence. This bill should excite you if you believe in clean energy and this bill should make you incredibly elated if you're a fan and an investor in Tesla. The company that believes in advancing sustainable energy stands to make billions, which I think will be reinvested back into the company to make products that help the future of humanity. My name is Sean Mitchell from All Things EV. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And what are your thoughts on this video? I'd love to hear in the comments down below.